Welcome to lesson 11. We are going to build out pagination in this video for Astro. You can see right over here, I've got all six uh, blog posts showing for me right now, except in this case, maybe it's just five, I can't remember, five blog posts, but in this case, I actually want to just show maybe three or something like that. I don't wanna manually clip them, I actually wanna create different pages as different nested blog routes. Now in this case, I've got my index page open up for my blog. Now. Just like we did with our author, I actually want this to be more dynamic than just like a static index page. So I'm gonna actually pull this up over here. We'll do dot, 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 and I'll just call this like blog or page or something like that. All right, so now we've got this dynamic page. Now you can see I need a get static paths function if I'm going to do it like that. So this one is actually gonna be pretty easy, especially if you did the last one with me. We're gonna export uh, a sync function. We're gonna call this get static paths. I'm gonna pass in paginate. And this is something Astro gives me by default. And then I'm simply gonna move in my all posts and I'm gonna move my formatted posts directly inside here. Now what I'm gonna do is return out of here because remember we have to return something, paginate like this. And I need to give this two things. First of all, the post itself that it should be worried about. In that case, that would be my formatted posts. And then secondly, in an options object here, I'm gonna pass in page size. In this case, I'm gonna do something like three. Now each page, which might be a collection of two or three posts, in this case it's three posts, will be passed down to me in this dynamic route as a page. So page just like this uh, equals astro.props. In other words, this custom function that they wrote will return it to me just like this. Now in order to see what's going on, I'm gonna go ahead and grab all of this and comment this out. And let's go ahead and just console.log the page. So I'm gonna refresh here and this should work. And it doesn't, and that's because I forgot when you're naming these things like this, you actually need to name this page. Alternatively, I think you can actually pass in a different uh, option here. I forget what it is. Um, so I'll leave that alone for now, but I'll let you figure that out. So I think you can actually customize that if you want. Now, what are we actually getting here? If I open this up, you'll notice that down below, I'm getting a list of things. All right, so this is what I'm console logging here. Number one, I'm getting all of the pages in this route or all the data in this route in a data array. And then I'm getting the start, so which page starts this, the ends, the last page, how many there are, total individual posts, current page I'm on, last page, and then the URL for the current one, the next one, and if there is a previous one, it will show me that. So I can use all this to my advantage to basically create my own little custom routing based on what I'm getting passed back here from the pagination function. So let's get rid of this. I'm gonna come back down here and uncomment this, but before I save it, Let's go ahead and change this formatted posts. Now I know I'm getting page.data because remember the data array held all of my posts for this individual page. Now if I save that here, this should actually work. And you see I get three pages or three items back. If I change this to two, I should only get two. If I change it to one, I should only get one. What happens if I change it to zero? Uh, well, it just spazzes out. <laughs> okay, good to know. All right, so uh, I can tell how many I want per page. Maybe I say like seven per page, it's only gonna give me the five I have, but if I had two more, it would give me that. So let's go back to something like three. And what I can do is just manually navigate to the next page. You might remember it was just called two like that. And you'll see I'll get the next two here. Now if I were to go to three, there is no three. So if I go there, it should just put me to my 404, which is what it does. So let's actually build a little custom navigation component down here that will pass uh, down here basically to decide whether or not it should show if we have a previous page, a next page, all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna open up the sidebar and in the components here, I'm gonna add another component called pagination.astro. Now I wanna use my buttons in this component. So let's go ahead and make sure we import that. So let's say like uh, component imports. I'll say import link from, and this is a relative path and I'm in the same directory. So I can just grab the link.astro right here. Now the other things I'm gonna pass in here are a previous URL, prev URL, and I'm also gonna pass in a next URL. This is what I'm gonna get in my astro.props because I'm gonna pass it down. Now, and I think this is what you should do. You should have a nav tag here, at least that's how I've written this. That's my understanding. As long as you give this an ARIA label and all your other nav tags have an ARIA label. Now we already have a primary nav. This should now be like blog pages or something like that. I think this is how this should work. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, I really wanna get better at accessibility and that's my understanding of how it works. Now I have a couple different options here. And number one, I have if prev URL is present. So like on the first page, I won't have a previous URL, so this should never show. But if it is, why don't I go ahead and just output a link right here. Now, what do I want this to have? 
Well, the text here, I'd want to be something like, uh, I don't know, previous. The href, I'd want to be my prev URL, right? The style, in this case, I want it to be primary, which will be that dark color. I want the border visible to be true, and I do not want it to be filled. So I'm going to remove that default. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead and pass in an icon. Remember, this is an object itself. This will have a name. This is going to be from the tabler pack that comes from icons that I showed you a while ago. And this is going to be called arrow, big, left, line. And then finally, I'm going to have a side. In this case, because it's the previous, I want it to be on the left. That way, the arrow points back to the left, and it starts on the left side of the word. I'm going to save this. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, icons, let's see, right here. This is where you can grab packs from, and I can basically grab any of these and just grab this and copy it and drop it right in here, and it will show uh, because of the icon pack that we're using. Now, I'm not actually using it right here. I'm passing it down to the link, and that's where it's being invoked. So that's where I have to import that icon. We set that up several videos ago, so you can go check that out if you're a little fuzzy on how that works. Now, all I'm going to do is grab this, and I'm going to move it down the other way. We're going to change each of these, prev and prev, to next URL. Let's say if the next URL is present, go ahead and show that. And this should just say next, and this should say big right line. And finally, this will be moved to the right. So I'll save that, and now we actually need to invoke it here in the dynamic page route. So just below the post container inside the section here, I'm going to go ahead and add that pagination. If I start to type, the Astro plugin should go ahead and import it up top. Let me just double check that it's put it in a place that I like. Nope, doesn't usually. All right, I'll put it up there next to my other component imports. And let's see, inside here, I need to pass it two things. You might remember that would be the previous URL and then the next URL. If I open this back up, you'll notice that it's inside of a URL property itself, and it's an object inside of that. That means my prev URL needs to be page.url.prev. And then my next URL needs to be page.url.next. Now, why am I saying page here? Well, it's because this is what I'm getting back up top. The only other place I'm using any data here is from the page.data, which is my array of different cards that I'm passing. If I wanted to, I could come back here and pass in like the current page, wherever that is. Um, so I could pass that in if I wanted to and make that like dynamic to say like blog post page two or something like that. But I'm just going to leave it alone. I'll let you do that if you'd like to. Now, when I save this, everything should pull in. Let's see. There we go. So I get this next button. If I click over here, I now get a previous button. Let's go ahead and change this to like one. So I get lots of different options here. So I've got a next. Now I've got next and prev, so I go next, and you can notice here this URL is just changing to three, to four, to five, and now that's the last one I have. So I can go backwards like this. Of course, if I were to come up here and pass in as this options object, uh, like uh, filter out future posts and set this to false, now I should actually get one more, five, six, because this future post is now showing. Well, I guess it's the very first one is now showing. All right, but I'm not going to do that, so let me get rid of that. So that's all there is to setting up pagination when it comes to Astro. Because of this nice paginate function that they have, it's really easy to then just return this, decide exactly what you want it to look like, and then create a little dynamic component that will just generate those next and previous buttons when you need them. You can now see the power of all those link components we set up and all the other components we set up. Once you set them up once, now we're using this postcard everywhere, we're using the main layout everywhere, and we just had to do it once at the very beginning of this project, and now we get all the benefit of using them whenever we want to. Now in the next video, we're going to apply a lot of the things we've learned about looping over data from those markdown files like right here. And what we're going to do is output a list of tags that we can show at the bottom of these new blog posts. It will both show all the tags available on our site or categories, not tags. And then it'll also have an option to show how many we have in each category.